nothing. He said, it's the sound. It's the putting them together. As, as clothes are hung on a clothesline, you put the words in a sentence. And it's the rhythm, the punctuation of that sentence that imparts the rhythm. The, in, the meaning of the individual words is negligible. That's what poetry is. And that's what I'm saying, going over to the other side and bringing back these visions and then putting them into word. You see, this is, this is creative evolution. Because as Bergson said, you've got the spirit continually pushing upward. And you've got materiality continually pushing downward. When they meet, something concrete is produced, in this case, a poem. Do but, you have a favorite, a favorite Frost poem? I really don't have a favorite Frost poem. No, I, I mean, I, I like them all equally for different reasons, yeah. I mean, uh, for that example... That sounds like a politician's answer. It's, a, no, it's not a politician's answer. It's just somebody who's... who's I, I think I've read, read a lot of Frost poems, and every one is, is good. Some are better than others. Uh, but they're good in different ways. I mean, he has a poem called A Lone Striker. Which, now, he was known as a, as a curmudgeonly conservative, but actually, in truth, he was more of, a, of a, an agrarian populist uh, than a, than a modern-day conservative. He just wanted to be left alone on his farm. But uh, A Lone Striker is, is very pro-labor, um, and, and it makes some statements on, on uh, the working man uh, that you know, would fit right in with any labor union today. Beautiful poem, and, and I do that in the show. Uh, then he had a poem about the, um, the conquistadores uh, in, invading uh, the Incas and trying to get the gold. And it's a wonderful anti-materialist statement. It's called The Vindictive. It's a very long poem. Uh, the punchline in that is, the best way to hate is the worst, is to take what the hated need, never mind what actual worth, and wipe that out of the earth. Let them die of unsatisfied greed, of unsatisfied love of display of unsatisfied love of the high, unvulgar, unsoiled, and ideal. Let their trappings be taken away. Let them suffer starvation and die of being brought down to the real. And this is what he was saying was the, the Incas went and hid all the gold because they, they knew the gold wasn't, wasn't, was only valuable because the Spaniards said it was valuable. So they hid it all. And they brought them down to the real because they couldn't find the gold. So as I say, there's, a, there's an anti-materialist statement in that. Uh, you can find so many things in, in every one of his poems that you read. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse, dear. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind, downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Talk to me a little bit about how you started moving from reading about Frost and reading Frost to basically channeling Frost and doing the performances that you do. Well, you know, that's interesting. I, I was working as a reference librarian about 1999, and uh, I believe that was the, uh, the end of the era when every, every other actor was doing, uh, doing uh, Mark Twain. Uh, and then somebody came along and did Harry Truman. And, and they were all good. I mean, they, they were interesting. Some were better than others. But I'm thinking, geez. Robert Frost is one of the most interesting guys I've ever read about. Nobody's ever done him. And, th and that was 1999, 2000. So it just started germinating. I'm saying, wow, that would be, nobody's doing this. It wouldn't have too much competition. This, would, this, would be, <laughs> <laughs> this might be a good gig. And it would also be a good way to bring his poetry back, maybe into the public arena. Uh, these kids haven't heard it. These kids are definitely today not, not familiar with metaphor. They're not at home in metaphor. Uh, so it just it began as like a lark, as a gig, and then I'd say probably in about 2005, it, I finally said, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sit down and write this. That uh, you know, I, I just thought it would be a fascinating. He, he had a fascinating life. Nobody was doing it, and his poetry. There was a need for his poetry to come back into the public domain because kids today need. I, I think they need to be versed in metaphor. So from that was born Sam Allen's Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice, exactly. And that's what it came from. And why did you pick Fire and Ice? Well, that was one of his, uh, that was one of his favorite poems, I think, from all accounts that I've read. A very short poem. It was from a phase in his career when he was doing short, short stuff. 
and it shows the, uh, I think it's a great uh, metaphor for Frost's life because he has the fire, he has the ice, he has the atheist father, he has the uh, mystic, Christian mystic mother. I mean, the opposites, and that's what it, his whole career was about, bringing these opposites in, bringing them in, making a metaphor out of them. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Today. It's, it's been a pleasure. Very good questions. I appreciate it, and, and I hope we can get uh, generate some interest in this. Because Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there, had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, but knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere, ages and ages hence, Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. <laughs>